what other witnesses can we put on today that are lengthy? <laughs> Michael Tima. Spell your last name? T H I E M E. Journey to self. affected in Georgia for sure. I live in Valdosta. Um, I um, and the Georgia route, even though I realize this is about the Florida route, it has been affected by the plan for the Georgia Florida route. So but um yes. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and turn what we have marked to your resume which is Where's our book? I see. No. It's up there. Or that. <laughs> Well, I've really been a professor since 2003, which is when I got my PhD on and off. I've been an instructor, but it took me a long time to get it. I'm missing the first page. Of this. And, um, Go ahead. Feel free to elaborate. I, um, Valdosta is very similar geologically to, to this area, and so um, we do a lot. And most of my, both of my colleague, main principal colleagues are, are Florida geologists, so we, we spend a lot of time with students down here. We, we usually go to the Olinos to sink and rise, for example. I didn't know this Sawani Cross or anything until this, but. We work with some of the equipment that's being used by say the trail like radar and uh, electrical resistivity. Um, I've done some research with LIDAR students before. I would like to move on the witness to I 
would like to voir dire, but just I don't. I think and those fields are a little. A better tender is uh, geomorphology. Uh, True. The witnesses. I mean, I did. I, I should say I did get as far as for PG. I just never. I took the exam and passed it, and I just never went through to work, to work as a professional in the firms. I mean, that's just not the way my career was all set up. But I have the exam. I, I know the, I have the knowledge base. I just, I'm, I'm not a hydrogeologist. I'm a geologist. So, yeah. We just said you're not a hydrogeologist? Yeah. Right. I mean, most of the, the second stage of PG these days is, is all um, based on hydrogeology. And I just... Can I have Bordar on this? My name here. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. You're not a licensed professional geologist in the state of Florida, are you? Right. Are you a licensed state, uh, professional geologist in any state? So that's what I'm saying. I was in G in, in Georgia. I actually taught the course, and um, you know, I, I, I did uh, take the exam. I just I never, I worked as, no, I never worked as a professional geologist. Okay. Do you intend to give testimony today concerning concerning geology? It's up to the court. I mean, I'm. Well, I, yeah, I, I just want to raise this concern, and, and, and for your honor's reference, I raised this concern ahead of time off the record with uh, with opposing counsel and, and Mr. Quarterman that and I do have a concern about someone who's not licensed. In the state of Florida, is a PG giving testimony on giving the practice of geology in terms of his testimony. So, if he's going to be, you know, I'm well, let's stop right there because I'm pretty sure a uh, you don't have to be licensed to appear as a expert witness. And uh, if you find out otherwise, and so show me a case. I will be persuaded, but uh, my understanding, my, my memory of this issue that's come came up a few years ago when we had an engineer on the stand is you do not have to be licensed in Florida, uh, and that's, I don't know that you have to be licensed anywhere to take a witness stand and testify as an expert. But you may find out something else, uh, but until you do, you as, as if you could give expert testimony. No, no. Um, you only have a handful of publications concerning karst geology, correct? None of which are in a peer-reviewed journal, correct? Um, Yeah, I mean, I've published uh, a lot of field trip things, but that's true. Um, I didn't, to be honest, I, when I moved to Valdosta, that was um, when I began. But, but I actually grew up in Tennessee, so I, I've known about cars for a long time. I just, it was, that's true. I, wasn't, I was mostly um, dealing with dating methods and things like that. What is the field of geomorphology? Dealing with what methods? Like radiocarbon dating, luminescence dating, um, methods of dating. So there's some overlap, but but um, that's right. I, I'm not a, somebody who's published a lot about different types of sequels. And what is geomorphology as a field of study? Uh, it's the study of the surface topography and uh, causes for those features. Of the surface? Of the surface. And what is a hydro? What is the field of hydrogeology? Uh, it's a study of groundwater and with the rocks that hold it. <clears throat> Your Honor, I have no problem with him being you know, testifying about geomorphology, but not the underlying geology. So, if he wants to give testimony as to the surface expression of features, I think that falls within the field of geomorphology. But if he starts talking about the movement of groundwater or karst features at depth, <coughs> and I think that's a different field in which he specifically said he is not. Is, ge is geomorphology limited to surface features? No, I mean, I mean, probably my main concern is there's a very little of the sort of thing he's talking about in, in the documents. So, um, 
but well, tell me I'm not going to question geom things that aren't there. But. I'm talking about geomorphology. Let's stick to that subject. I'm asking you whether it's a science that, that equates a geomorphologist with uh, subsurface geology and right. relation, you know. Yeah, I mean, I taught said, said sedimentation and stratigraphy, and I have published on... Um, I, had a, I have, have done some work on a limestone quarry, and, um, but yeah, there, there, there's not a lot of peer-reviewed publications yet. On, uh, on and, Your Honor, just to follow up on the great thing about Google, Google, and you tell me if you agree or disagree with this definition of the field of geomorphology, is the scientific study of the origin and evolution of topographic and bathymetric features created by physical or chemical processes operating at or near the surface of the Earth. Is that a fair characterization of the field? It's a little long-winded, I think, for, for what I said. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not perfectly fine with what you said, but it, the, what you said is that it's dealing with the surface. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we don't have to understand the rocks and the stratigraphy in order to... I mean, we, we all have to have... I mean, the best geomorphologists have degrees in geology. I mean, that's... It's not... You're not going to do that without knowing geology. So. And your degrees in history with a master's in conservation archaeology, and your PhD is in yeah. archaeological geology. True. I mean, it's, a ge it's, it's a PhD in geology. I, I, I had... Um, your resume says archaeological geology. True. But that doesn't mean I would... It's a PhD from the Department of Geology. I was teaching geology, and I'm still teaching geology, so um, if anything, I just know a little more. <clears throat> Did your dissertation deal with... The Delta River, the Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania, not with the Solani and the Florida. It'll go to the way. Uh, it does have background in geology. I think you need to be more specific. Uh, you're, that doesn't guide the witness much in terms of focusing on something. Uh, you just like throwing it up in the air and you know, tell us why you came. We're not sure. You know. I'll be more specific. Change my question. Let's move to lidar. Yes, I and it from actually I think 2000 and, um, nine or eight or nine or something like that but on the coast and it was pretty pretty much incipient what they were getting. And do you know if um, the EP was presented with um, the lidar image of the Uh, Florida DP, where they, do yes. they have it for the whole route? Mm -hmm. Is your question? Mm -hmm. um, I think they could have gotten it, but I don't know. I don't know that they have. Do you think that it would be essential to have like? Yeah, I think. Um, not just. As, as, as people have mentioned, it's not going to tell you, it's not going to do everything by itself. That's true. But um, on, the, on the uplands, I mean, all, all, the, all the, the whole route, you know, I think they could make, make some use of it. Um, and why is that? Um, because the, the existing topographic maps and even the sinkhole database that the state has, um, are based on things like 10 feet elevation changes, or maybe in, on the coast five feet, but this will show you half, uh, down to a half a foot. Um, I mean, the raw data is that detailed. Of course, you, you group it, and, but you can make much more detailed um, analysis of a, a fairly flat landscape, what seems like a fairly flat landscape, you can start to see things that you can see before. Are you familiar with 
familiar with um, the Sable Trail Karst Mitigation Plan? Yes. As of a couple days ago, but yes. And have you reviewed it? Yeah, we have it. Not exhaustive, but I, I last night in, in, in detail. Yeah. We have it. Well, we have it as Exhibit U. I'm not sure what it's What's that be part of that? It's six. 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 Yes, that is wrong. Oh, yeah. Cars mitigation plan will be found. I have it. I mean, For the record, though, we'll make it easy. It's going to be volume 10, exhibit 5, attachment J, which begins at Bates, 1767. Now, because I suspect that the Karst Mitigation Plan will get a lot of attention mm -hmm. uh, in the hearing, it, it's convenient to have it as a ready exhibit mm -hmm. uh, and not very, you know, really large volume. So I think it would be good to just give it another number. Uh, we'll give it a, we'll have a duplicate, which happens sometimes. I try to avoid it, but there's plenty of time for a reason to avoid it. So let's get it in as a additional exhibit number. So that's not handy. Your Honor, unless I'm mistaken, I believe it's already admitted that the petition says six. All right. Sorry, I'm a fool. Uh, <laughs> all right. So we have it already at six. And you didn't object then. <laughs> and your Honor, for no, ease of reference, it's also a safe trail. I thought it was of what you said was from there, so I think it's better if I have right. my notes. In, in your expert, some probably from the sinkhole database or something like that um, and then they did some, some field work and there were many changes to the initial assessments based on um, the findings and um, so to be clear you thought it was a small sample size yeah uh, I think you said that I think found it difficult to assign those, even those general, low, medium, and high uh, potential risks with what's in here. I'm sure that there's a lot that they that they um, based it, put those on that's not in here. So, and to be honest, there's not a lot of stratigraphy in here. There's very little description of what and, and I, I was kind of surprised to see it from Florida because uh, there's less understood about that sort of thing in Georgia, but there's a very detailed uh, the stratigraphy in most of the areas that they went to, and, and there's no mention of any of the actual rock units or what the cover material is. Like they're basically grouping it all together as overburden. Um, I mean, it could be described with, with formal stratigraphic names and things like that. In your experience, what effect does the topography of the land have on water flow? Um, well, of course, a, um, a river is a catchment of the landscape based on the topography. So, um, you know, we do have relatively low relief, and we have discharge from springs in these rivers. So when they 
they're, they're flowing a lot faster with a lot more water than you might think just from surface catchment. Is that sort of, I guess that's, they're, they're, they're rivers that are um, gaining in some reaches from the, the aquifer and losing in others. Um, that's a big part of, of why the river and, is behaving the way it is. And does the field of geomorphology have any interaction with the aquifer? Yes, I mean, in these areas, you have to consider that um, the, the land surface is pretty much right, intersecting the water table and, and, and the groundwater in places. And where are those certain places? Um, well, the places where the water goes in are sinks, and the places where the water comes out are springs. Okay. Yeah. And what are some of the importances of groundwater resources in Florida? Um, yes, I mean the uh, water in Florida is a great treasure. I mean, it's a great future source of potable water for future generations. So, um, they're also shallow. Maybe the, the other thing that I, I, I also, um, I'm not sure is being considered is there are bodies of, of um, water, groundwater that are above the limestone in places. We have a lot of them in, in, in um, South Georgia. We're getting closer to the top of the limestone here, so it's not as much, but just talking to some of the landowners, there, a lot of their wells are actually tapping into the shallow aquifer. And how is your experience with water flow and the aquifer relevant to the sample trail pipeline? Objection calls for a legal conclusion. No rule. It's not, I don't think it is. It's not going to be accepted as legal. Um, I guess I see my relevance here as and, and, and part of it is I don't know, it does in a sense, he's, he may be correct that, that I don't necessarily know the legal framework that well, so I'm not sure why groundwater isn't being You're considered. Not legal witness, yeah, but but I, I, it does seem like uh, as a scientist and as a public citizen, there should have been more concern about that than there has been. But it may be that the framework is, is keeping that out of it for some reason. But yes, I think. More concerned about what? Groundwater. Yeah. And, and uh, shallow aquifers. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about what causes groundwater to be different pollution, how can different contaminants travel from these surface waters to... Well, everything that's on the surface... Well, Judge, I mean, here we're talking about hydrogeology. He is not a hydrogeologist. Mm -hmm. Groundwater moves between the surface and the aquifer, or vice versa, is, is clearly hydrogeology. Oh, yes. Uh, when you said concern with groundwater, what did you mean by it? Um, well, to be specific to the karst mitigation plan, um, when they're talking about losing um, um, drilling fluids into these um, places where there are um, contacts with the, the limestone uh, voids, I would think they should put monitoring wells or do something in there to be sure that, that there's not contamination to the groundwater. I mean, that's a specific thing, but um, and maybe the people that reviewed it for, for the geological survey were not looking at the groundwater issue is what I'm getting the message about, but I'm not sure what, what, why, why that's being left out. It just seems like Are there any publications that you've relied upon um, regarding groundwater contamination? Um, there are some exhibits about... Um, mm -hmm. Is that exhibit M? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, one of... And, and the ones that I'm most familiar with are from um, South Georgia. So there's um, there's 
a plumber. And this is a summary that mentions that, which discussed on um, we have recharge. It's pretty from with the Fuji River into the uh, upper court and aquifer. And Your Honor, we're going to have an objection. It's, it's incomplete. It's one. It's page 63 out of something. So yeah. Big City's trying to get into testimony, whatever. Yeah. It's the truth of the matter, sir, whatever reported on the page. All right. We will not try to move this into evidence, but may he still read from it or not say what he learned from it? No, that's the same as getting into evidence. Okay. Um, you know, you can you, you can take a document and read it, something, see something in it, and and formulate a question without reference to the document. If it says, uh, I don't know, pandas prefer cold weather, uh, you can ask. You know, instead of saying, doesn't this document say panda? You can just say. What do you know about pandas and their preference for temperatures? You know, and, and you don't need a document. I mean, the document just guides you. It doesn't need to guide you. But uh, this is hearsay. I'm not going out. Okay. Uh, we know, we know, we know pollution is bad. Uh, we don't need a witness to tell us that. We build on that a little farther. Um, as far as your experience with surface water flows. How does that, how might those be affected by this? Objection, I think the foundation needs to be laid for a couple of analysis. Surface water flows? Yes, because we established that geomorphology included. It's turning into a class session as opposed to something specific to this pipeline project. It's pollution is bad. Drilling fluid is a pollutant, uh, and it's going to go all over the place. Then that's a cause of concern. Uh, it'll go wherever it's connected. It'll follow every connection with the flow of the water. I guess that can, you know. But you know what we need to know is whether this project will cause pollution, not a general a general statement. Um, so that's your question you should try to focus in on that. Do you have any evidence that this project could potentially cause pollution? Well I think there's direct discussion of that in this mitigation plan as far as what would happen um, at some river crossings. They basically mostly looked at that. They didn't talk about uh, probably as much in other areas. And then um, once it's there, I think everybody has to worry about what could happen if uh, ground collapse caused the pipe to rupture. And, yeah. Objection, I think, calls for speculation. I suppose, but there's evidence that it happens quite a lot. So, I mean, I'm not an expert in that, so that's true. But I mean, that is an area of possible contaminants. The type of things that would be within the realm of professional engineering rather than the work of the pipe would collapse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe that that concludes our question. Okay. Thank you. Well, hold on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 30 seconds, Your Honor. You said you're a member of Walls? I am a member of Walls. When did you become a member? I believe 2012. So you paid dues? And yes, I paid the single rate, $25. You know, Probably three times, I guess. As far as you know, you're a current member? They told me I was.
No further questions. Department. Um, Mr. Clear, you're not a geologist, right? Professional geologist. I'm not a PG. I'm a geologist. And you're not a, a hydrogeologist, is that correct? That's correct. Have you ever put together a course mitigation plan? Um, no. And you looked at the one we discussed here today last night? Well, I've had it a couple days, but um, I have put together proposals similar to this for other, other types of research, just not, not for cars. such a thing as a karst geomorphologist? Um, yes. I mean, we had one at, at the University I went to. But you're not one. I've become one. I go and get papers and sessions on it, so I would consider that one of my areas these days. But, but when I was in graduate school, I was working on fluvial geomorphology. I mean, the, the only thing that you know about potential pollution caused by this project is what you referred to in the karst mitigation plan that you read last night? I would say I know a good deal about what could happen in South Georgia. Um, okay, but I'm talking, I, I want you to focus on this project. Um, yeah, there wasn't very much in this report, so that concerns me actually that there's not much in there. So, so you don't know? Partly because there's not much in there. But you don't know anything except for what was in here, correct? That's right. So there may be other documents that I haven't looked at that are relevant to that. That's all I, I didn't get. Yes. You said that you've never prepared a karst mitigation report. However, have you taught? I teach a geohazards class. Unfortunately, the textbook chapter we use is just not very detailed on this. This is a very specialized thing. I mean, if you're outside of Florida or outside of the areas of habit. So um, I'm a more general geologist. I means Dale Jenkins Guy means Mr. Quarterman may take a stand. Mr. Quarterman will. And we have uh, uh, Mrs. Merkel. Deanna Murrow. Carlos Hurd. Carlos Hurst. Hurd. Hurd. Richard Gamble, we believe, is a, a he's a, a Swanee County Commissioner, and he's asked for a, a time certain at 1 p.m. Who else? Uh, Richard we Gamble. Have, Who else? Um, Lori McCraney. Lori McCraney. 
Mr. Gamble a uh, member? Mr. Gamble a member? No. No. Is he an, ex is he an expert? He's a county commissioner. No, I don't. Not as an expert. So uh, discuss further. Do you anticipate testimony? <coughs> it's, uh, was touched on today with regard to uh, the removal of clay in Swanee County and resulting sinkholes uh, in the uh, cost to the county that, that uh, was incurred by the county. You mean in, uh, some problems associated with another pipeline? No, no, it wasn't a, a pipeline. It was a, uh, just an excavation project in the same proximity. Randall, Means, Jenkins, Quarterman, Erickle, Bird, Gamble, Stevens, McCraney. Your Honor, one uh, you know, couple concerns I have. Uh, most important is it's easily over a day's worth of, of testimony. We have, if we need to call a rebuttal, uh, that's not over a day's worth. We have one witness that is unavailable Thursday. So to the extent we need to do a rebuttal, request the opportunity to call uh, one witness if we do do it. Out of order. Call them tomorrow? Yes, sir. All right. And similarly, Judge, uh, Mr. Means has been uh, made available for today and tomorrow. And that's listed on the petitioner's witness list, so the petitioners would like to call him. They listed, they just said they were going to put him in the Yep, okay. Just make sure. All right. And we will get to that witness sometime tomorrow. Yeah. All right, on the record. Any, made out of, any other matter placed on the record before we adjourn until tomorrow morning? Hearing nothing, we are adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Do you want